Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit niche. It's about how to scrape Amiga WHD load games um, when the scraper you're using might not have any reference to them. So quite often with the WHD load sets, they'll get revised, improved, changed, so the file name will change. So that means that a lot of scrapers, if they base it on the file name, can't find that game you're looking for. Um, and when that file changes, it also changes the contents, which means that um, other checks it can do that uh, kind of check the hash of the file. So CRC, MD5, SHA1, other processes it runs to say, is this that file? No longer match anything. So you end up with no scrapes. So what I've done, um, I've run through this process and it, it kind of automates a lot of it. So you don't have to manually rename files um, to make it match. But anyway, I'll show you the problem first so you can see what's going on. So I'm using Scraper. Um, that's based on screenscraper.fr. Uh, it's got a pretty big database. It's got loads of games on it and largely it, it matches most things that you throw at it. But what I want to do is check with the Amiga here. So I've just, been, I'll do a separate video on how Scraper works, but basically I've pointed it at the location where my ROMs are, so all games are. So here um, I've got a folder with two WHD load games and I've got Cannon Fodder and Kickoff 2. Obviously, you might have um, a lot more different ROMs to this, but um, you need, just need to point the scraper at the folder. And um, when you've set all the settings, um, press pl uh, play, press scrape. So I hit scrape, and it say down here what it's looking for. So two ROMs found in the folder. It's completed um, scraping for. And then it's completed the file. completed the game because I haven't seen it. So if we look in that folder now. Um, up here, you can see it's added a media folder and a couple of game list files. So to start with, if we look in the media folder, I can see that in my folders, so box art, I've got Canon folder, it's found that, and um, video Canon folder, it's found that. But there's nothing about kickoff here, it's just Canon folder all the way through. It's quite happily found it, but nothing for kickoff at all. Now, what it's done, there's an option in, in Scraper to say all of the games that it can't find, put it in a file. So it's put it all in this text file. If I open that up and shrink the window down a bit, you can see um, there it's got a full list of all of the games it couldn't find. In this case, it's got one line. Um, it's got pipe delimited value. So it said, that's the file name I can't find. It's CRC um, is this, it's MD5 value is this, and it's SHA, what, uh, oh, there's four values actually. Okay, maybe that's a file size or something. Either way, these are just extra bits of info that um, it's tagged against that um, game file on your computer and it can't find it in its database. Now, if you've got 100 that it can't find, you'll have 100 rows. And because it's all pipe delimited, you can put this into Excel really easily. There's a couple of pipes there, so it's probably a value it couldn't find as well that would normally go there. Anyway, the point is, um, when you've got this list of everything it can't find, that's the first step to making... Um, the, the fix is um, automated. But first, I'll show you why that matters. So it's looking for this file name here. I'll copy that out. And if we go to the Screen Scraper database, let's fire that up. Okay, so here you can see um, we're on Screen Scraper. We're looking at Kickoff 2. And we're looking at the ROMs tab on Kickoff 2. And obviously, we're looking specifically at the Amiga version computer Commodore. So down here are all of the file names that it would say if it found those, it would know it's kickoff two. And none of these file names, scrolling down here, match the one we're looking for. If I hit control F there and paste in what I've got, it's kickoff two, 1.09, da 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 dot LHA. And looking down here, it's, it just doesn't exist. If we have a quick look for any LHA files, you can see that it's got one really similar, 1.08, as opposed to 1.09. Um, so that implies that this was probably a WHD load file as well. Now, it doesn't matter which, for the scraping purposes, which one you put. If I renamed my WHD load file kickoff2.uae, it would match it and scrape kickoff2 content. Um, obviously, the region I selected might come into it, so it would say, oh, I'll, I'll bring back the German version or the Spanish version. But um, in this instance, I can see, ah, Europe's the right one. That's the file name it knows about. If I now go and rename um, my ROM to be this 1.08, which is over here, if I just rename that 1.08, and I'd probably be aware and it would scrape fine. But the point is, you might have hundreds of these, and you don't really want to go and click manually to each one. So that's where you can get um, all of the 
all of the ROMs that didn't work from this file, get them into Excel. So if I open Excel and show you what, how that looks. So here you can see, here's a list of all the ones I automatically imported from that text file. So I've get, you can see all of them that couldn't match. And then here I've got all of the names that would match in Screen Scraper just by doing that same process, by finding the game in there, seeing what file names it does like and using one of them. Um, that way, if I just selected that, copied and that into a batch file, it would automatically rename all my files for me into a format that Screen Scraper could see and scrape based on. So um, in my case, I'm only using one file, one file in the example. So I'll just copy one line. I'll copy that out go to the folder that I'm doing it in and I'll create a batch file. So just go new text document and rename to screen scraper, for example, uh, call that dot bat. Are you sure? Yes. And if we edit that, paste that line in, it's put a tab separate. It doesn't matter. It still work. Um, and I'll put at the end, oops, I'll put at the end of that line, um, CMD. Okay, I think that keeps it open at the end so you can see what's happened. So I said rename that file to that value and save that. So that will rename the file to something Screen Scraper can see. Now, if I go back to that back, um, the Excel doc, you can see that once we've done all this, we've converted it to a name that Screen Scraper can scrape. After you need to put it back to what it was, otherwise, um, AmiBerry or whatever em emulator you're running. Would probably have an issue running that ROM because it's named something different to what it's got in its XML database. So you can't just rename them and then expect it to work as it did. It needs to be the name it originally was. So over here is just the opposite rename it back from what you've renamed it to to what it was in the first place. So rename it to something Screenscape can see, scrape it, rename it back, which uh, would do now. So Let's go back there. We've got the batch file here. We'll create another batch file for the reverse. So um, that would be this line up here. Copy that one to rename it back. Create a new batch file. Say rename to original, that be. And again, using um, Excel and um, online tools to sort of pass everything quickly, you can just paste the stack load at once. You don't have to do it manually. Um, so here we go. Rename it back from what we ran it to back to version 09. And again, put CMDK at the end so we can see what's run. Save that. Got the two batch files. So first thing I'm going to do is rename it to the screen scraper version. Hit enter there. And you can see it's finished, there's no errors. So the file is now 1.08. And if I wanted it back, I'll just hit rename to original and you can see it flips it back, no errors. And it's now 1.09. Anyway, rename to Screen Scraper. So done that, go back to Screen Scraper and we'll run that again. There we go. So it's found two ROMs completed. <laughs> If we go in here and now go in media, box art, it's found kickoff. It's found it um, because the file name matched its database. Similarly, I'm sure it's got the videos, except yeah, it's got the video, um, cart art, and everything else. So that's quite happy. Now, because it's named that, our emulator would have a problem because its XML database would say, oh, 1.08 should contain these files, and this one's a bit different. Anyway, rename it back. So you hit that. That's renamed it back to what it was. So now if we copied this across to emulation station or wherever it's going, you'll have the correctly named ROM. You'll have the media scraped properly, but you still have one problem in that when it scraped it, it wrote a game list. So for emulation station, and if we open that up, we can see that under game kickoff, it scraped it with a name that it, it looked at the time. So 1.08. Now, because in this example, there's only one file, I could just put that name back in manually once and that's fine. But if you've got hundreds and the tool I found useful for this is Notepad++. It's got a 
uh, regular expression ability. So you can again paste um, a series of find all of these and replace with all of these. So you can um, automate it that way. I'll put in the comments how to go about that in Notepad++. But at the same time, even if you did want to do this element manually, it's only a one-time job. Um, and if you've got a handful of files, I don't know, 20 or 30, it's really not too bad. But if you've got a lot, then Notepad++ um, might be a way to do that. Or in Linux, there's a lot of command line tools that would probably do a really good job of um, passing a, a file that we created earlier in um, in Excel, something like this. As long as you've got all the details there, it should be able to um, scan through that file. So that's another route. I think sed is the command in Linux that can um, can process sort of multiple changes in a single file because you've already got all the info you've got everything that you need there um, and you know what it should be the the only time consuming bit i can see really is going into screen scraper and find a valid file name that it can understand but then you know you could collate that have an online um, excel sheet somewhere and everyone could contribute and get one value um, and that would work fine, assuming that you've got these versions of the WHD load file. So absolutely not perfect, not by a long shot, but if you've got multiple files, it speeds things up. You don't have to go and rename every single individual one. Anyway, I'll quickly show you in Emulation Station how that looks now that in this um, Amiga section, all the media is scraped properly. Um, but yeah, the, the renaming pretty easy in batch files. The bit that you put a bit more effort into check your game list and make sure that the references that it's scraped are under um, bah, 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 under the path make sure they're named back to the original as well um, and then you should be up and running like i say relatively niche video i doubt i'll get more than five views but i was just running through this myself and i thought it might help people if they can't see how to scrape at all um, on whd load files because there isn't a match because you definitely can do it you just have to tweak a bit uh, but if you've got any questions, please um, put it in the comments. But otherwise, um, let's fire up Emulation Station. Okay, here we are in Emulation Station. Uh, scrape the Amiga games. We've got about 30. How many was it in there? 85 games in there. So it wasn't loads that I had to do. Um, but it certainly saved time doing it in that batch file approach. I had to do a few manual tweaks, but it wasn't too bad. Anyway, so you can see the results um, in this theme, this uh, comic theme. And I think it's pretty popular to see on a lot of videos. Uh, it's one of the best emulation station ones, I think. And you can see the video here. And then in the right hand side, you've got the box art. Um, below, obviously, you've got the text. You've got a bit of text around the genre, date, and developer. Um, and at the top, you should have. Oh, yeah, I haven't renamed it. Um, when I scraped it, the wheel art is saved as thumbnail. And if I change that to marquee, then at the black section in the top right, um, you get the wheel art of the given game as well. So that would appear if I tweaked it, which I haven't. But you can see um, here you've got all the named games renamed properly. You get the little video snap, box art and extra metadata. And on this theme, yeah, you get the wheel art, um, wheel art when you do it properly. Um, and they're all laid in fine, they're all found. There was about, I think, out of this batch of 80 odd, about 25 that weren't found. So I had to use that um, batch file method to find them um, and sort those out. Obviously you can do that individually on a file by file basis, but you'd be there forever. Anyway, to check that things do work, let's um, give one of the games a go. Bat, pang, maybe. Make sure they work. So. Part of that renaming process was to get it back to the WHD load file name that it came with, and make sure things like Amaberry can load it properly, and it looks like it's quite happy. So the rename process worked okay. And for other systems, it's not half as bad because file names um, are a lot more typical, and even if they're named something else, the CRC type checks would match so you don't get any problems there either but WHD load because they change file names and they change contents it can be a lot trickier so yeah if you've got hundreds and hundreds it could still possibly be a problem but um, probably it's not too bad okay does it work boom, boom, boom. normal yes give this a quick go
Ah. Well done to anyone who's still watching at this point. Ooh, ah, ugh. Spoke too soon. Okay. Nope. Finished. Quit. There you go. Amiga game scraped. Um, if you need any more details, please ask questions. Um, I'll put the links to various sites that I've used on, on that example in the databases. And um, yeah, hope it was helpful. Thanks.